Increasing a fish's chances of survival helps ensure populations will remain sustainable for future generations. However, helping a fish survive after being caught in deep water can present its own set of challenges. That's due to a condition called barotrauma. Barotrauma is a situation where the swim bladders on the inside of fish, which help them with their buoyancy, the change in the pressure from the depths to the surface causes these to expand. And if you don't address this with the fish, when you put it back in, they can actually float instead of going back down to the bottom where their habitat is and where they're most comfortable. Signs of barotrauma include the stomach coming out of the mouth, bulging eyes, bloated belly, and distended intestines. If a fish needs to be released and shows any signs of barotrauma, venting tools or descending devices can increase the fish's chance of survival. Not every fishing situation is going to require intervention by the fisherman. If the fish is lethargic, you see something bulging, then yes, you're going to have to intervene. It's important if you're going to do catch and release fishing because it improves the, uh, the chances that the fish is going to live. Venting tools are sharpened, hollow instruments that are inserted into the body cavity of the fish and allow expanded gas to escape from the swim bladder. While this can be an effective and low-cost method to treat barotrauma, it's often done improperly, which can cause more harm than good. Descending devices are another option that, when used correctly, are often more effective than venting. Also called a recompression tool, these devices send fish back down to a depth where increased pressure from the water will recompress swim bladder gases. Devices fall into one of three categories, mouth clamps, inverted hooks, and fish elevators. Mouth clamps are attached to a rod and reel and use a pressure sensor or a weighted spring release mechanism. Pressurized devices release fish automatically at a predetermined depth selected by the angler, while weighted spring release tools let go of fish after the angler gives a sharp tug on the line. Mouth clamps tend to be slightly more expensive and require practice, but the devices can be compact. Inverted hooks work similar to mouth clamp devices, but are inserted through the hole made by the hook. Once the fish is deep enough to reverse the effects of barotrauma, the angler reels up the line and the fish swims away. This method is fairly inexpensive, but takes practice. A third option is the fish elevator, an inverted container such as a milk crate, with a rope attached to the top and weights on the bottom. This creates a bottomless cage that brings the fish back down to capture depth. This method can be inexpensive and easy to use, but these devices are not compact and have limitations when it comes to the size of the fish you plan to use it on. Choose the device and method that you are most comfortable with that best fits the situation at hand and that minimizes the amount of time that the fish is out of the water. It's such a great opportunity to be able to use a tool that is so simple, so inexpensive, to return a resource so that it can uh, continue to breathe, it can be caught by other fishermen. Um, you know, it's really the responsible thing to do, it's not hard to do, and uh, if you do care about the resource, uh, it's something that everyone should learn how to do and um, you know, take responsibility for helping with the fishery.